I had a client come in today and we were talking about e-newsletters and I said, uh, always put a video at the top of your e-newsletter. And she said, why? I thought, well, actually, that's a really good question. Why do we do it? Um, You may have seen our Spinning Planet e-newsletter and you may have noticed that we always put a video at the top. And the reason that we do it is, um, and we do it on pages as well, if you've got a video at the top of your web page, more than 50% of people will watch the video first. And if you put a video in your e-newsletter, um, there's lots of different stats that show that you'll get 40% more clicks if there's a video there. Now, of course, because it's an email, you can't actually embed the video in the email because it won't work on all email programs. So the best thing to do is to actually just link to a YouTube video and put an image up there with a play button on it so people know that it's a video. So in today's blog, I'm going to show you how you can put a play button on top of an image that you can put in your e-newsletter. So the first thing you want is to find a video. I'm going to use a video that has gotten the most clicks out of any video that I've put in our e-newsletter, and it's one of this funny cat doing Morse code. So here's the cat here, and that's just really cute. And if you put that in your e-newsletter, you'll be surprised at how many people will click on it to view it. And the reason that we're doing that is, is it's stopping them from deleting the e-newsletter, which makes it more likely that they're going to read the rest of the content. Now, the thing is, there's two ways I can get the image. I can do a print screen, which is, you know, just pressing the print screen button on on your keyboard, and it takes a photo of your whole screen, and then you could go in and edit that image, and I'll show you how to do that. So, I'm using the GNU image manipulation program, which is free, but I'll show you that screen capture, which is here. And I'll just, sorry, it's screen capped both of my screens, but I could easily just go select that bit that I want there and I can crop it. Now, of course, that means that you have to capture it in exactly the right place. There's another way that you can do it, which is actually a lot easier. If you already know what the video is, such as funny Morse code mission cat version. Now watch this. If I go and Google search for that, in fact, I'll do it in another tab. It's going to bring me up all those search results. Of course, it's showing the Google videos, but if I switch to images... Somebody else has already gone in and done that image for me. And then all I have to do is go view image, and it shows me the image, nice, and I'll just right-click on it and go save as. And I'll just call it cat doing Morse code. And I'll save that into my pictures folder and go save. And what I'll do is I'll get rid of this one because I don't need it anymore and I don't need that one either. Um, So I'll get rid of that and we'll go and open that image up. And that should be right at the top. There it is there. Right, so now we've got the image that we want to use in our e-newsletter, but we need a nice play button to go over the top of it. Again, we'll go back to Google and all we have to do is search for play button transparent background you want a tr- transparent background so it sits on top of the image and we just want to do an images search and we can look at these images now as an example if I click on this one See how it's got those squares, uh, gray squares, white squares? That means that the background is transparent. And because we can actually see them through this gray, that means that the gray is about 50% transparent as well. So that's a great image. We want to use it. So I'll click View Image. It's quite large, but we'll scale it. And then I right-click on it, and I go Save Image As. Play button, that'll do. Put that there. 
Then I'll go and open up my image editing program again. What was your number? And I'll go file open. Click on that play button. There it is. Now, all I have to do is go control C on my keyboard to copy that. Go back to our other image and then go control V. And of course, it's way too big. So I'll click on the scale tool over here. And I'll just click and drag. And you'll see if I click right into the center here, I can pull that down a bit. And then I can rescale it again just by clicking on the corner. If I hold down the shift and control key at the same time, it's going to scale evenly. And then I'll let go. And then I'll drag that back into the middle over here. And I'll just show you the little scale dialog that's opened up when I was doing that. And then I'll click scale. So now I've got this nice little play button. And if I want, I can choose the, um, the uh, move tool over here. And I can drag it around. That's good enough. And then what I do is I just go file, export as, and I'm going to export this as, yep, cat doing Morse code with play button. Go export. Yes, I want it to be 90%. In fact, I'm going to get rid of these two black bars. So I'm just going to draw a mask around the bit that I want to keep just by clicking on that mask tool up there. And then I'll go image and I'll go crop to selection. And now I've got rid of those ugly black bars. And then, of course, I'll go file, export as that name again. Right. So now we've got our new image that we're going to use in our e-newsletter. Of course, you might want to make it a bit smaller because it's a bit big. So I'll go scale the whole image, and I'll say, actually, I only want it to be 200 pixels wide. And that's locked, so it's going to scale the whole thing proportionately. There we go. At 100%, that's going to be the size oh, of the image. Yeah, right, and then, of course, I'll export it again. Yeah. And now let's go and have a look at that image. And it should be in my pictures folder. There it is. Uh, cat doing Morse code with play button. And if I open that... I'll just open it up in this program again. Here's the finished image that you'll put into your newsletter. So I want you to try that with your next newsletter and just see how many more clicks you get because people recognize that it's a video and they can play it.